Hey guys, welcome to Skilling. Do you guys have any idea on how many parts a car has? Actually, there are around 30,000 parts in a car. And most of these 30,000 components are made out of a variety of manufacturing processes. And today, we'll be talking about a certain machine used during these manufacturing processes. Well, it's the lathe. So what does this lathe do? Well, it's a machine that shapes wood, metal or other materials by means of rotating the workpiece against a cutting tool. In today's video, we'll be talking about the constructional features of the center lathe. So this is how a center lathe looks like. The foundation for the lathe is the bed. It holds up major parts like headstock, tailstock and the carriage. The bed surface is a finely machined pathway called guideways so that the carriage and the tailstock can slide over. This bed is mounted on vertical structures called legs, which provide an elevating working surface. Because of heavy weight and different loading conditions, the legs are bolted to the floor so that they remain stable during the machining process. The next component is the headstock. It's mounted rigidly on the left corner of the bed. It consists of a spindle and various other combinations of gears and pulleys which are controlled by levers that help vary the rotational speed of the spindle. An electric motor is used to rotate these gears and pulleys. To this spindle, a chuck is fixed which actually holds the workpiece. There are three types of chuck used. They are the three-jaw universal chuck, four-jaw independent chuck and the collet chuck. Let's start by talking about the three-jaw universal chuck. As the name suggests, there are three jaws. These jaws are used to hold round and hexagonal work pieces. Similarly, there are four jaws in the four-jaw independent chuck. This type is used to hold square, hexagonal and irregular shaped work pieces. The last type is the collet chuck. These are used for high precision work and small tools. This type is used to hold square or hexagonal shaped workpieces. The next component in the lathe is the tailstock which is placed at the extreme right end on the bed. It is called the dead center as it does not help in rotating the workpiece, but instead it supports the other end of the workpiece in case it is long. The tailstock can be made to slide along the bed in case of operations like drilling, reaming, boring, etc. Tools can be fixed to the tailstock and with the help of a handle wheel, the feed can be given. The spindle clamping lever present on the top of the tailstock helps in tightening the tool or the dead center. The next important component is the carriage. The carriage consists of a saddle, cross slide, compound rest, tool post and apron. The saddle is an H-shaped casing which slides upon the bed waist. The cross slide slides over this saddle. It helps in performing turning operations. For those who are not aware what turning operation is, let me simplify it for you. It's a machining process that helps reduce the diameter of the workpiece. The feed rod helps in moving the saddle, cross slide and the compound rest. The next component on the carriage is the compound rest. It slides over the cross slide and supports the tool post where the tools are clamped. It's used to give cross feed for the cutting tool. That means it performs the phasing operation. The last part on the carriage is the apron. It is attached to the saddle and consists of gears, levers and clutches which help in automatic movement of the saddle and cross slide. The whole movement of the carriage is done with the help of a feed rod. The gears in the apron connect the hand wheel and the feed rod. As we move the handle, the respective motion that appears on the screen occurs. In case of automatic operations, with the help of levers and clutch, the gears are meshed to the lead screw. This lead screw draws output directly from the motor and meshes with the gears to perform automatic operations. Finally, after all the operations, the chips generated by the operation is collected on a chip pan. This is present at the bottom of the lathe bed. 
So that's it for this video guys. Hope you're clear about the components of a center lathe. In our upcoming video, we'll be talking about the operation done by the center lathe. So stay tuned and until then, bye.